What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rugged. Today, we're going to be giving you my first impressions of Colt King Cobra. <laughs> What is going on guys? Welcome to another Rugged Review. Today we are going to take a look or at least give you the initial impressions of the Coat King Cobra. Let's do a little bit of an unboxing, take a look at the case goodies they got in here. So obviously we got our manual. I'll go ahead and pull that out because obviously whenever you get a new gun, the first thing you want to do is sit there and spend some time reading the manual. It'd be really nice if they made it a little easier to get out because uh, I'm trying to like peel it out of this thing and it just does not want to play nice. I'm gonna go ahead and push back the plastic there a little bit, see if that helps. Oh, we're almost there. All right, so you gotta peel this thing out. Of course, it'll tell you how to fire the gun, how not to hold it, what not to do. Yeah, don't don't put your finger in front where the cylinder gap is there. I have heard of somebody uh, actually on the other side was hold, they were holding their thumb or one of their fingers by that little gap right there and blew off the finger and tried to sue Smith & Wesson or something. So don't do that. Read the manual. Take a look at the pictures if you're not familiar with what you're going to be doing here. Uh, what else do they give us? Uh, there's this thing here. We'll set that off to the side for later. I think it's important. Uh, oh, got, gotta have your lock. Gotta have your lock. You know, everybody, everybody I know uses these and uh, not a waste of money. Definitely uh, important that they put that in here for, uh, for safety and stuff. Yeah. And then what do they got here? A little Lucas ad. Nice. Give us a little gun oil, all that cool stuff. All right. Here's my little free sample. Yeah, we have here, this was something telling you you risk injury and death by playing or handling a firearm. Well, that's kind of something I hope you would know before you pick up a gun. And then you have the pieces of this little plastic ring that was inside of there just kind of to show you that the gun was unloaded. Very cool, little sticker tag that was wrapped around the trigger guard. And Colt encourages you to join the National Rifle Association. All right, not a bad idea. Support gun rights, join some sort of group, whatever you whatever you can. Put some money towards the cause. And now, this guy. It does come wrapped in plastic nicely here. We'll go ahead and pull this sucker out. And we have the Colt King Cobra. In case you were confused, they have a nice little roll mark here for us. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Colt King Cobra. I have the three, three and a quarter, I believe the barrel is. Let's see, I think it actually tells me on the front of the case here. One second. Let's see. Three inch, three inch stainless steel. I know, one of those things that I should probably know before I start doing the video, but you know, hopefully you'll forgive me for that one as I'm showing you this nice gun that I picked up at Walcott Guns in Depew, or you could say in Buffalo, if you Google it, uh, you'll be able to find them. A little shout out to the local gun shop here. So, Colt King Cobra, Colt revolvers, as you can see, when you pull the hammer back, it does rotate clockwise, whereas your Smith will probably, ro well not probably, your Smith will rotate counterclockwise. I'll go ahead and put that down. You actually have to pull back instead of pushing forward like you would with most other revolvers. And then you can see, we have six rounds that we could put in here of 357 or 38 special if you wanted to. The gun itself, uh, I mean, it is beautiful. Fit and finish is excellent. It's a, uh, it's a heavier gun. I mean, it's it's a revolver. You know, what do, what do you expect for a stainless steel revolver? Three inch, I find to be kind of like that, that perfect middle ground that you can actually use it to go out and have fun um, on the range with. And I, I do plan on also carrying this. Um, they have the target model, which has, I believe, a four-inch barrel on it, so it's a little bit longer, and a fiber optic sight. Whereas this one, you just have the gutter in the back here, and then you have that brass bead in front, which is pretty bright. You just kind of line it up like that. Um, it's it's quick to acquire that target. I mean, it, it's a it's a good little sighting system. Would I like fiber optic in the front, or maybe something with some tritium? Yes. And if I do want to do that, 
there's actually a little Allen key that you would use to unscrew the front sight post. You can pull that out, swap it in with whatever you want, which is really nice. Um, other important details on this. You know what? Let's take a look at the trigger pull. Um, at the weight of that, actually, I have a little gauge over here. I haven't done this yet myself, so you guys are going to be seeing this with me as I try to figure out the best way to do this and keep it in frame on camera. I guess we'll go like this. Now, the double action, uh, I think it was like eight or nine pounds it's supposed to be, so we will see if it'll even register on here because this only goes up to eight pounds. All right, let's give it a shot here. All right, and you're well past my gauge, so that's not gonna work out. I'll give this one more shot. Maybe if I can put this towards the bottom, it'll work a little better for us. All right, now I had to pull that all the way. As you can see, the gauge isn't going any further. So we're, we're definitely over eight pounds. Um, let's go with, it doesn't seem to be that much more off the gauge though. Let's see if I can give you one more shot of the double action. See how close we can get. Ugh, we're, we're almost there. I'm gonna guess probably around 10 pounds. Let's see where we're at with the single action. here all right we're still in frame we'll take a look and we'll give it a shot all right so we're looking at right on five and a half but i'm gonna cut the video because my wife is calling me give me one second here all right guys so we are back my wife is all set good to go let's take a look at this now we'll give it one more actually let's give it two more just to make sure for science and all that good stuff, you know? Ow, okay, move your finger before uh, you pull the trigger there, because if it uh, is in the way of the hammer, it's gonna flick you and kinda hurt a little bit. Let's give this one more shot. Right around five pounds. All right, one more time because my finger messed up that other one there. Okay, right around five again. This thing is pretty consistent. As you can see, if it'll focus, yeah, single action's pretty damn consistent, which is uh, which is nice. These whole grips, I mean, they fit. They fit the grip nicely. They really do. Your hand just wraps right in there. The grooves are great for my hands. I have medium-sized hands. Uh, if you look at the trigger guard, you can see it kind of sweeps down here. That is to help with gloved firing, so it's a little larger. It doesn't snag up on you there. Um, you do have the full underlug there, which makes the barrel a little beefier, helps soak up some of that recoil. And then uh, now what I wanted to do real quick is just give you a little bit of a size comparison with some other somewhat familiar guns. So. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my regular everyday carry, which is gonna be the SIG P365. I love this gun. Um, you can wear it with pretty much anything and have 10 rounds plus one of nine millimeter, which is outstanding. I'll go ahead and set that there so you can take a look at the size comparison. Put that on top, you can see where that is. Obviously, it is gonna be larger than the SIG 365, which I mean, most guns are. But um, anyways, we'll go ahead and put something else there. It's a little closer to size. And you will see the Glock 48 here. This is my wife's. Again, as you can see, I did not pick out this purple for myself. So forgive me for having that craziness on here. I'll go ahead and do a side by side. We'll go muzzle to muzzle. You can see there's a little bit of extra hanging off here. If we go handle to handle, you can just see how much more length you're gonna have on the revolver. Um, although, I mean, it's not bad. It's not horrible. I, I'm gonna carry this thing. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna not regularly. Maybe as a barbecue gun, something along those lines. Um, but yeah, I'm a fan of it. It's got a nice little heftiness to it, and uh, six rounds of 357 that you can carry on your body. So, uh, questions or suggestions? Definitely hit me down below in the comment section. And in case you haven't already. 
hit subscribe check out the uh that notification button if you can click that as well so you can see when the new videos are coming out and uh thank you for watching sorry for the camera wobble there i kind of hit the table but uh yeah it's another rugged review y'all peace